These three cowboy preachers got together one day, and they were fellowshipping, just having a good time, and they were praying and all, and just feeling real good. And finally, the old, oldest one in the bunch looked around at the guys, and he said, you know it would be really good? It would be really good if we would take time and confess our sins to one another. The Bible tells us to do that, that we're to confess our sins one to another, and God will, God will forgive our sins. And they thought about it for a minute, and they said, well, probably not a bad idea. Well, they sat there for a minute. No one wanted to go first. And finally, that young cowboy preacher, he said, well, I'll go first. He said, i got to be honest with you. He said, at the end of the service on Sunday, he said, they locked that offering up in my office. And after everybody's gone and I'm sitting in that office and I'm looking over at all that money sitting there in them two big barns, I can't help myself. And I go over one of them barns and I pull me out a 50 and I put it in my pocket. They all went to pray. After they got done, the middle one said, Well, since he's coming clean, I kind of like to take a little nip of liquor every now and then. As a matter of fact, I got me a bottle of Crown Royal locked in my bottom drawer at my desk at the church. And when everybody's gone and there ain't nobody around, I'll reach down there, I'll unlock that drawer, and I'll slide it out, and I'll take me a little nip. They all went to pray for him. They were all done, and they were sitting there. And Finally, the young preacher looks over at the old preacher and says, What about you? He said, Well, i got to be honest with you guys. He said, My biggest sin is I love to gossip. And to tell you the truth, I can't wait to get out of here. <laughs> How many of y'all like winning? How many of y'all like losing? <laughs> Terry and I went down and watched the Glen Rose Tigers play Friday night at home club. How many of y'all go? <laughs> yes, sir. They got, a pretty good, they got a pretty good team, don't they? I'm going to tell you what. You know what drove me to go watch that game? They were 5-0. and People like winning. People come to the stands when they're winning... They were talking about uh, the Texas Rangers. I'm going to talk more about them next week. I'm going to preach on winning for a couple weeks here. But uh, they said that like four hours before the game, they still had 2,000 tickets left for that playoff game. See, everybody believed that the Texas Rangers had lost their will to win. They didn't have that desire to win. I'm going to tell you what, Terry and I are going to Stevensville next week. We're going to watch our Glen Rose Tigers kick the snot out of Stephenville. If you're all here from Stephenville, I apologize. 7-0, right. How many games y'all play? You play six, you're going to be 7 and 0 <laughs> See, take your shoe off. Take your shoe off. It'll be all right. How many you play total? No, yeah. Well, I'm not talking about state. Normal games. Eight games, ten games. District games, all the games. Y'all play them all district. But I want to see them go undefeated. I am on this bandwagon for winning. I am all about winning. But, you know, for us to win in life, for us to be victorious in life, there's some things that we got to do. See, so we get defeated easy. The devil comes playing hard. And it's hard to be a winner in life all the time, ain't it? You ever meet someone who's just got a smile on their face all the time? I was watching, flipping through the channels last night and come through one of them shows them and they were talking about these two ladies they thought got put in jail for killing this guy or whatever and they were talking to the woman and the lady's smiling and she's in jail. The lady asked her, she said, why are you always smiling? She said, I don't know. She said, either smile or cry and I just choose to smile. See, God has called us to be winners. God has planned a victorious life for us. God wants us to win, to succeed in life. But to be winners relies on us. If you brought your Bibles with you today, we're going to be in 1 John chapter 5. We're going to read one uh, verse. Chapter 5, verse 4. Shane, could you turn that heat down something? Are y'all warm? Yeah, baby. Good thing we put three of them things in. Woo! Huh? <laughs> You're already cold? 
Oh, you want to be cold. Outside. Outside's a good place to be to be cold. But if we're going to be winners, God said there's certain things we got to do. So for the next three weeks, we're going to talk about winning. What it takes to be victorious in life. Does winning always mean in life of getting what you want? We got to clarify that before we start talking about winning and, and, and losing. Can you still win and not get the new truck that you want? Can you still win and not get the promotion you want? Because without that, we'll never be winners. If it's based on our succession and possessions, then we're never going to be winners. We're going to be caught up in what we have establishes who we are. God doesn't look about what we are. God wants to know who we are. He wants to know who we are inside. So 1 John chapter 5, verse 4 says, For whatever is born of God overcomes the world, wins. Whatever is born of God wins. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. It is our faith. And the biggest thing that stops us is the doom and gloom. Anybody know anybody that's always, oh, no, we'll never make it. Y'all heard me talk about this a hundred times. You ever known someone like that? It's always downhill. It's always a burden. It's always, I can't get this and I can't do that. Nine times out of ten, it's always somebody else's fault. But gloom and doom breeds failure. You set yourself up to fail when you're focusing on the gloom and the doom. When you start focusing on the things and the actions and what, and what is caused by little specific things in your life, that's when you start to fail. You can't be a winner when you're sitting there focused on that. You've heard me say two or three times in the last couple of weeks about if we would be in praise to God, turn our back on the doom and gloom, and be in praise to God, and we turn back around, that doesn't look as big as it is. Life will pull us down. 1 Corinthians 15, 57 says, But thanks be to God, which give us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Have you ever said, you are what you eat? Have you ever heard that? You are what you eat. I look like a big old cheeseburger. Maybe some chicken fried steak with lots of gravy. But you know what? It's the same way in our spiritual lives, the same way in our walk. If we want to be victorious, if we want to win, we are what we eat. If we're putting in nothing but doom and gloom, that's what's going to come out. That's what we're going to have. If we're putting in praise to the Lord, if we're putting in our relationship with the Lord, if we're focusing on the Lord, it won't look that bad. See, what comes from a relationship with God is hope. That that's not the end. That that's, uh, so many people today are so caught up that things are, uh, I've heard this expression, well, he's a drama king or she's a drama queen. You know anybody like that? Everything's big blown out. It's life-threatening and changing. I didn't get my nails done, and they're all worked up about it. I tell you what, you can get on these social media sites, and you wouldn't believe the things that upset people, that bring, you just drive them crazy. And I'm like, really? Out of all the things going on in the world and in your life, the lady mispainted one of your toenails? Is the main thing that's driving you to be upset today? I need your life, because if that is the worst thing that's going on, you're having a pretty good day, dude. There is no gloom in that day. If that's the worst thing you got to be upset about is so-and-so did not sit by you in the cafeteria, you're doing great. Man, I tell you what, come hang out with me for a day. You can get caught up in doom and gloom when these compressors start going down and you got 20 people calling you and they need to have this, that, and the other. And you know what? They don't care that you've got other people that need stuff. Because it's all about what they need to get their things going, to get them running. We can't get focused on the doom and the gloom. If we do, it robs us. Romans 15, 13 says, now the, <clears throat> now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Spirit. I'm telling you what, we have hope. That's what lets us to be winners. That thing is, you know, you might strike out, but you're going to get to bat again. You know what I mean? You might throw an interception. How many of y'all watched the West Virginia game last night? That little quarterback is something. I mean, I heard about him. I all got to watch him. 
But he fumbled twice. Deep in their own territory, he dropped the ball. The other team recovered. It hurt them both times that he fumbled that ball. He could have easily took and focused on the doom and the gloom would happen and went over and sat down on that bench and pouted. And thought, oh, Lord, it's over. I cost them the game. Look at this. No one's going to talk to me. No one's going to want to be in practice. Everybody's going to be mad at me. That's not what he done. He went to the bench. He sat down. He got with his coaches. And he come out and threw a touchdown pass the next series of plays. He says, you know what? I'm going to be a winner. I'm going to focus on winning. I'm not going to worry about the fumble. I'm not going to worry about the doom and gloom. I'm not going to get wrapped all up in the doom and gloom. <coughs> I couldn't imagine going through life without hope. I've said this a whole bunch of times. We go through life without hope. How do you go before a doctor or go under surgery and not have hope? Not have the peace of God that comes with him. I, I don't know how we tackle the things of life every day. And I guess if you don't know Christ, it's something, maybe that's how it overwhelms you. But I get this peace about me that it's going to be all right. But I'm going to tell you this. It doesn't come automatic. Terry and I had this weekend planned. We were going to go away. We were going to a big roping. Going over to Athens. We were going to win every roping we were in, win the saddles, the buckles, the cash, everything. We had it all planned out just how it was going to go. Half a day at work, getting off, going to meet friends. We're going to load up the trailer, and we're going. If I want a whole bunch of money and all, I might be roping today. Shane was going to be preaching. We had it ready, had it all lined out. Got up Friday morning, her horse is sick. End up taking him to the vet. Starts to turn out like it's going to be worse than, you know, I mean, we're thinking the worst. I'm thinking he's foundering. The way he is in his front feet and stuff, I think his left front foot's starting to rotate. I'm like, wow. She gets him to the vet. She calls me. They're checking him out. I'm going through a school zone. Bam, get a speeding ticket. It's not funny. <laughs> I did not see any humor in this. I'm going to tell you what, it was real hard for the next two hours for me to think about winning anything because I was really wrapped up in a sick horse and an officer that I wanted to go visit because I know you spend a lot of time in Joshua but that's a speed trap where you get there where you go around that little corner if you get to that stop instead of going straight or going out by the Valero you take a right and you go around the bend and it drops down there's no flashing sign that says school zone it's just a little 20 mile an hour I know I was speeding Maybe I got the ticket. I know I was speeding. <laughs> but there wasn't no big warning sign, no flashing light, no big old thing, you know, wind flashing, this, that, and other. 20 mile an hour, school zone. That's all it said. So you turn the bend, right there's the car. And he's like, I just pull over. Wasn't no sense in doing anything. It was just me and him on the road, and I knew he wasn't waving because he liked me. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you, for the next two hours, and I talked to God, and I asked God to give me peace and all. But it was hard to get it. Getting over the doom and gloom doesn't come easy. Folks, it takes work. And it took me hours to get done. And I prayed, and I prayed, and I prayed. And I finally got to where I was going to lunch. I was meeting some customers for lunch. And, and, and I was so and boiled in what had happened and what was going on. I know I wasn't very good company. But I kept praying. God, show me what's going on here. I want to win in this situation. Don't know how it's going to happen. I want to win in this. Get a text from my boss. Got a $500 a month raise. I was winning then. But I didn't give up. I was like that quarterback from West Virginia. It'd been easy to just get wrapped up in and, not, and miss that blessing and let it blow right by and just stay focused on, well, it ain't going to matter because I got a sick horse and that horse, and, the, and he's Terry's good roping horse. And what are we going to do if he's foundered? And we're going to have to go get another horse. And, you know, it had been so easy to just stay focused on the doom and gloom and went right past the blessing. Because I'm going to tell you what, you cannot see the blessing if your eyes are clouded in despair and depression wrapped up in the doom and the gloom that's going on in life. 
Yes, our, our verse told us, he says in verse 4, for whoever is born of God overcomes the world. He didn't say you overcome this and you overcome that, that you might get through some things and you might not get through others. He said you're going to overcome the world. Everything that's going to happen to you, you can overcome it. Don't get focused on the downside. Psalm 71, 14 says, But I will hope continually and will praise thee more and more. Got to take our focus off the problem. How many of y'all know King David? King David was a winner. Would you agree? Was King David a winner? Absolutely. Love the Lord. The only one in the Bible that God says, A man after my own heart. Was his life perfect? Heck no. He had battles. Won some, lost some. Had people trying to kill him. He had failures and difficulties in his life. But he always wanted to win. He didn't focus on the doom and gloom. He didn't focus on what the actual problem was. You know, because when we look at a problem, it grows and grows and grows. The more you dwell on it, the bigger it gets. The more substance you put to it. The fatter it gets, the stronger it gets, the meaner it gets. And every time you look at it, it just makes you want to shake more. But David says, I'm going to look at God. And I'm going to give my praise to God. Facing the giants. Remember that? If we win, we'll praise you. And if we lose, we'll praise you. We're going to keep our focus and our hope knowing that this ain't the end. That this ain't that all-powerful great thing that's just going to kill our lives out and we're just going to be miserable forever. That's not what it is. David had every chance. He had the king of the nation trying to hunt him down and kill him. His best friend was the king's son. He had all kinds of dilemma, but he refused to get caught. Look what it says in Psalms 42, 5. Why, why art thou cast down, O my soul? He's talking to himself. Why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God. For I shall yet praise him for the help of his constant. I will praise him for his presence in my life. All this is going on in David's life. People trying to hunt him down and kill him. He just thought he was trying to please the king. He went out and won the battle. He just happened to kill more people than Saul did. He was more victorious than Saul. He wasn't doing it for himself. Saul sent him out. He was Saul's number one man. He sent him out there. He did job. He used to play music for Saul to soothe him. He did everything the king wanted. You ever do that? Think you're doing everything right and it just goes down. And you go, God, why in the world this happened? I've been going to church. I've been going to Bible study. I read my Bible every day. I've been praying. Look at King David. He was appointed and elected by God. Handpicked and chosen. He didn't lead a perfect life. I'll give you another one. How about Jesus Christ? God in the flesh. God's son. He didn't come down here and live like no king. They were trying to kill him everywhere he went. Ended up nailing him to a cross. Never got caught up in the doom and the gloom. Never focused on all the all the problems that was happening on. He focused on his father. And he put his focus on God. And he got through the rough time. He received the blessing and come out on the other side a winner. You ever said, man, I don't know how I got through that. Or I don't know how so-and-so made it through that. I don't know if I could have done that. This might sound bad. I, how many of y'all got to meet my little grandbaby that was here last week? Isn't he the precious thing you ever seen? It is to me anyway. We got seven of those. Another one on the way. Was with us for four days. Go home. I love you. But the blessing and all was getting overwhelming. Having a little 18 month old baby. I mean, they're like the Energizer Bunny. There's no off switch. Papa, Papa, Papa. Daddy, Daddy, Daddy. Grandma, Grandma, Grandma. Mama, Mama, Mama. mama. I'm like, chill. Don't you want to take a nap? Please, Dad, Papa, take a nap. I didn't focus on all that. That would have been the negative, the gloom, the, the, the being tired and the run down and, and not being able to watch the news. I didn't focus on all that. 
I focused on the blessing of what God had given me of him being here and getting to see him and spend time with him. When it left, I wanted to be a winner through the situation. I wanted to come out victorious. They're talking about moving back. It's great. And they can go home every night. But we can get so caught up in life focusing on the problems. We can get so caught up in life seeing nothing but doom and gloom. And when we do that, we rob ourselves of God's victory and God's joy and God's hope in our life. You're going to win if you just keep following God. There's a blessing coming, I'll guarantee it. God says, you can't imagine the life I've had planned for you, of great things I've placed for you. How could a God that loved you so much that sent His Son to die for you want misery for you? He doesn't, but you're going to go through it. David went through it. Jesus went through it. It's how we handle it. If we want to be winners, it's all how we handle it. I, I, I look at that quarterback and think, man, after that second fumble, Okay, one, but now two. He's getting his team in a point where they could actually lose the game. So easy to just get trapped in that and focus on that. If he would have, I believe in my heart, he would have never come out, played the game that he played, and won the football game. He refused to lose. Folks, we got to refuse to to lose. We got to keep that hope in us, that fire in us, that excitement in us. The easiest way to do it, if we want to win, if we want to be winners, if we want to get the win for our team, we need to learn to live a life of praise to God. It's hard. I'm telling you, after that day we had Friday, it was hard. And I very easily could have said, no, I'm not going to the football game. I'm going to just sit here and I'm going to mope and what are we going to do about this and what are we going to do about that? How are we going to pay this vet bill and how are we going to do that? could have been overwhelming. Matter of fact, it was. Believe me, every one of those thoughts went through my head. I am no different than you. I put my pants on one leg at a time. devil comes after me just like he comes after you. But I started to realize but the horse is going to get better. There's going to be another roping. I need to pay more attention to the speeding sign. And God has a blessing waiting for me when I acknowledge that he's in control. I even quoted that same thing to him as I was driving down the road. Lord, when I win, I will praise you. And when I lose, I will praise you. Bring peace to my spirit in my life. I'll get through this. It's not that overwhelming. The writer of Hebrews wrote, For without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is God. And he is the rewarder, the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Folks, there's a reward out there. That quarterback got rewarded for his commitment to winning. You too will be rewarded for your commitment to God. I don't know how it's going to come. You know, Friday ended up turning out being one of the greatest evenings we had had in a long time, didn't it, babe? Didn't start off that way. Got to go to the game, got to see a bunch of the youth. See some friends and some people, just have a great time. Watch them Tigers put it on there. Folks, if you ain't seen them play, you need to go see them play. They're playing good. They're playing good football. If we want to be winners, we got to choose to be winners. We have to praise God when our trials and our tribulations. We have to pray God. We have to praise God in the midst of our trials, saying, God, you are my source of my strength through the storms, through the rising and the winds, the howling, and my trust is in you. God says, when you do, that puts a smile on his face and joy in his heart because he knows that you're relying on him. We have to be a people 
if we want to win. When we live a life of praise, it brings power to God to help us. It shows God that we admit that we can't do it alone. I'm going to leave you with this. 2 Samuel 22, verses 6 through 8 says, The sorrows of hell compress me, compress me about. The snares of death prevent me, prevented me. And in my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried to my God. And he did hear my voice out of his temple. And my cry did enter into his ear. Then the earth shook and trembled. You praise God, he'll answer. You cry out to God, he'll show you the way. You ask, isn't that what Jesus said? Ask and it shall be given unto you. Knock and you shall, it shall be opened. Ask and you shall receive. Folks, all we have to do to be winners, keep God first and the focus on Him and we'll get the win. If you come here today and you didn't know that there was a God out here that said, hey, you know what? I don't care what trials you're in, what tribulations you're in, what toughness you're in. I don't care what struggles you're going through, what addiction you have. I don't care what you've done in the past. I don't care how bad you... You can be a winner. You can put all that away here today. I'll come in and be the master of your life. All you've got to do is ask me. Maybe you were going through the life here this last couple months and, and you've known the Lord and all, but you haven't cried out to Him. You haven't praised Him. You haven't sought Him at that time. Maybe today is the day that you say this prayer, Lord, I want to get back to being a winner. I don't want to be a loser anymore. I don't want to be burdened down with all the things that are going on, all the doom and the gloom, all the problems. Folks, I promise you, if you will put your attention on God, turn your back on your problem, when you turn around to face that mountain of a problem, it'll just be a little bump in the road. Because God is bigger than any problem you have in your life. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we just love you and we thank you and we praise you. Lord, we want to be winners. It's so hard though. It's so easy to get caught up in the, in the problem and in, in the doom and the gloom and, and the why me's and, and the impact of how it affects us and strikes us, Lord. But today I call on those that know you that if they walked in here today and they felt they were fighting a losing battle, that they'll walk out of here today as winners and say, you know what, God? Today I praise you and give you the praise. Lord. Today I turn it around. Today I keep you up on my dash. I keep you up in the front part of my brain. I keep you in the front utmost part of my heart. And I call upon you in these times, Lord. No longer will I be overcome by the doom and gloom. I want to give it all to you. And Lord, for that one that didn't know how to do it, that there was a, a winning coach out there that's willing to take control, that had a game plan for his life, and it wasn't the one that he was living. It wasn't one of defeat. It wasn't one of doom and gloom. That they can change it today. Your word tells them that all they have to do is believe in their hearts and confess with their mouth. Believe in their hearts that Jesus was Lord and confess with their mouth that you've raised him from the dead and shall be saved. Your word teaches us that by no other name can a man be saved. And that whoever calls on your name shall be saved. No matter what they've done. How bad they feel. They're sitting here right now, Lord, thinking that God could never love a person like them. Today you revealed to them that you could love them perfectly. And I pray that they would follow me in this prayer. That they'd call upon that love. That they would say, Jesus, I realize now that I've been caught up in the doom and the gloom. I've been caught up focusing on my problems. I've been caught up in this world. And today I want to call upon you to come in and be the Savior of my life. I believe in my heart, Jesus, that you were God in the flesh, that you walked this earth to be my guide, and that you were crucified on that cross to pay my debt. And I confess that you were raised from the dead, that you sit at the right hand of God right now. And I call on you to come in and be the Lord and Master of my life. And I ask it in Jesus' name. And all God's people say, Amen. You ready? Hold on for a second. Baby girl, would you get me a Bible? We got uh, one of the greatest things that we get to do here about at uh, Happy Trails Cowboy Church is to watch someone 
open up and, and say, I want to follow in believer's baptism. That today is the day that I want to take my hobbles off. I want to commit to the Lord and I want to show the world. <laughs> I met Greg a couple years ago. He's quite a young man. And a lot of people think that getting baptized means that you're joining the church. He calls me and says, hey, do I have to move my membership to get baptized at your church? I said, you're not getting baptized at Happy Trails Cowboy Church. You're getting baptized under Jesus Christ. Where you choose to put your church membership is totally up to you. But if you want to be baptized here, brother, we'll baptize you here. Is it a little cool? Uh, it sure felt a little cool to me earlier. <laughs> but he says, you know what? I want to be baptized here where I go to youth group. <laughs> you got to hurry up and go. Shane, you want to take over from here? His lips are quivering. Raised to walk in newness of life. 